and kind of going down the Geo Protective, we talked about Rapa, talked about Metformin. Next one we get asked about all the time is NAD. Also one we've covered in various podcasts, but looking at NAD, how would you put it into a category? So again, when we talk about NAD, um, we we have to we're really talking about multiple things we're talking about nad itself um but i'm also speaking a little bit more broadly when i'm i'm talking about precursors cuz nad can't be taken orally it could be given intravenously um when there are lots of clinics out there that do that but you know from a practical standpoint we tend to look at things that you can take orally so we really tend to be talking about nr and nmn which are oral precursors that become converted into nad um but but again let's just again provide just a touch of context here right so nad is discovered more than 100 years ago um and over time, I think people come to sort of understand it's a very important signaling molecule. It's a very important part of cellular metabolism. Oh, and by the way, it declines with age, right? So now you have this thing that's super interesting and super relevant and completely ubiquitous. And as we age, it goes down. So understandably, uh, in the early 2000s, uh, it became a very high interest topic. It further became of interest when it became linked to something called sirtuins, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So um, basically, sirtuins are proteins that require NAD to deacetylase lysine residues, um, which is just fancy chemical talk for it. It changes the modification of um, of an amino acid, but, but this is something that occurs so much and is so important to maintaining DNA integrity and managing oxidative stress that basically there were two hypotheses, right? Broadly speaking, one hypothesis is the reason NAD levels decline with age is because DNA damage goes up with age. That's true. We know that that's true. So are those two causally related? Is the rise in DNA damage with age um, driving an increase in NAD utilization, and that's why NAD is going down. Or are these uncoupled? Is DNA damage going up with age, which it is, and is NAD uh, abundance going down with age for a separate reason? And oh, if we only had more NAD, we could offset more DNA damage. Um, I think it's safe to say we don't yet know the answer to that, but nevertheless, um, I, you know, I, I think a cottage industry around NAD has come up, which says, look, we know the answer to this, or at least we're going to postulate that the answer is, of course, NAD is going down with age. Um, and whether or not that's causal or not, giving more NAD is going to be a better thing. Okay. So what do the data have to say? And again, this is an area where, I mean, there is a remarkably booming industry around the uh, administration of NAD and its precursors. Um, and it's, it's actually surprising how little data is, is out there. So, so what I thought I would do is try to highlight perhaps the most promising data I could see and, and, and hopefully by sharing why that's not so promising or why that's really, really small, um, you might be um, convinced of my view, which I should have said at the outset, is I kind of think this NAD stuff is noise at the moment. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm putting this in a category even below fuzzy, but to be clear, I'm not putting it in the nonsense category. Okay, what that means is there may still be clinical scenarios under which this makes sense, um, even if it is not protective. Again, very important distinction here. I'm going to talk about a couple of studies in neurodegenerative disease, one in ALS, one in Parkinson's disease, that are both so small and quite frankly, just so, I don't want to be disparaging to the studies, but, you know, not, not amazing studies, um, but reasonable first attempts at looking uh, that, you know, maybe there's something there and maybe in these um uh, scenarios, there is a benefit. Uh, but again, we're asking this through the lens of gyro protection. We're really asking the question in this context of, hey, if I take a bunch of NAD or a bunch of NAD precursors, such as NR and NMN, am I going to live longer? 
or even live significantly better? Uh, and again, I think the answer to that question is noise. So the ALS study gave um, patients, you know, a pretty high dose of a, a combination drug of nicotinamide riboside, so NR and terastilbene for four months, and then it followed basically symptoms of ALS on a functional scale. So unfortunately for anybody who has known a patient with ALS uh, or a family member or anything like that, I mean, it's, it's top three most debilitating diseases in the history of our species. Um, and unfortunately, there is no cure. Um, and, and, and the end is, is, is just a very tragic end. And so what this study was basically asking is, look, can we delay this in any way, shape, or form? And the short answer is at least on one of the functional scales of progression, uh, the answer appeared that yes, this compound of nicotinamide and terastilbene actually delayed progression um, by a short period of time for these patients. Now, again, this was a very small study. Um, clearly, this would be a phase one study. So again, first and foremost, you're just making sure, hey, there's no toxicity, which there wasn't. Um, and, you're, and you're basically saying, is there any smoke anywhere that makes me think there's a fire? Um, I believe there is a phase two trial ongoing. And my hope um, is that the phase two trial is significantly larger, has um, robust inputs, and therefore can shed light on this question. Because let's be clear, if there is um, a compound out there that can keep a patient off a ventilator longer when they have ALS or can prevent, um, you know, secretion issues longer or respiratory distress longer, by all means, like that's a very important uh, thing to know. The other study I would uh, reference is also a very small study that was done in 20 patients, uh, 10 of whom had, um, or 20, 20 patients with Parkinson's disease, 10 were put on nicotinamide riboside, 10 on a placebo for four weeks, and it saw some change in one of the movement disorder uh, rating scales that's used to, uh, to subjectively uh, quantify movement in patients with, with PD. Um, but there's a bit of a catch because that was the, the patients were also um, there was a confounder in that some of those patients were closer in their last dose to levodopa, which is a medication that in the early stages of the disease is quite effective at improving movement. So, so that's, I mean, again, it's, it was not a very well done study. Um, and I, again, I, I think the, the most charitable thing one could say about that study is look at it maybe suggest that there's something there worth looking at. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't think that that would even rise to the level of being as compelling as the standard therapies that are used for patients with with Parkinson's disease. Um, again, there's one other study that looked at MCI, I believe, mild cognitive impairment, um, and it looked at NAD use in, um, I believe it was studying some aspects of memory and physical function it showed some improvements in physical function, which again would not be the primary concern for MCI, uh, but it did not show any improvement in cognitive impact. By the way, it might mean that there is an improvement in cognitive impact, but not over such a short time frame, um, or that the, the, the test, because it was a phase one study, was too small um, to actually see a signal, right? The signal wasn't, you know, you weren't powered to see a signal, which by the way, is not always the case in a phase one. So. Where do, where, do I, where do I land on all this? I think that the evidence that NAD and its precursors is geroprotective, meaning we are going to take a bunch of people who don't have disease and we're going to make them live longer. I think this is, I think this is uh, a very, very low probability, but not zero. Um, and again, I think the probability we're not going to be talking about this one in, in another hundred episodes is pretty low. Um, it, it, you know, in the, uh, in the spirit of like, well, how much do I believe in this? And, you know, I don't take these compounds, right? I, I, I don't take NAD infusions. I don't take NR. I don't take NMN. Um, and it's certainly not because there isn't an abundance of those things out there. Um, but that's, that's, I guess, tells you my level of confidence in this. 